birds. Now, they're nervous. But um, if you'll just encourage them, this is where it starts. This is courage for them. Because when they get our age, I don't want them to be afraid like this anymore. Amen. So it starts here. And if you'll just um, bear with us. <coughs> Let's see. What in the world is it? Come on. I thought it was actually on Kim. Thank you. And I want you to say hi. Okay, Andy Kate, you ready? Huh? You want somebody else to say it? Here. Fear is an emotion that warns us of danger or cautions us to stay alert. We need to be a little afraid of something. Or we do stupid things. Or pick up poisonous snakes. Or play fetch with other. It says we need to be a little bit of afraid. Because if not, we'll do silly things. Like pick up poisonous snakes. Or play fetch with a bear. Fear will cause us to settle for less than God's best for us. It will cause us to disobey after it weakens our trust. Fear will even rob us of peace and joy when we stay strong. We need, we need to recognize where fear comes from. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of, and of a sound mind. 2 Timothy Fear is a trick of the devil. God knew the devil would use fear to trick us. That he is why he told us to not be afraid over 100 times in the Bible. If you are focused more on your fear than on your faith, you are letting the devil win the battle. That's right. Right. Jesus said, peace I leave with you. May my peace I give to you, not as the world gives you. Do not let <coughs> your heart be troubled and not do not be afraid. The more we fo focus on God's love, the louder our faith will be and the quieter our fears will get. More fear. Less faith. Or more faith. More faith, less fear. Less fear. Good job, you did good. Amen. Good job. When we are faced with a scary situation, we want to be prayed for. Amen. When we are faced with a scary situation, we want to be prayed for. We want to be pros. Uh, and what's pros, you ask? We're going to tell you. <clears throat> R. O. And S. 
That's yeah. right. That's right. Now, and if you can do all of these, then you can be a pro too at shutting fear down. Amen. So now, if y'all go up there, we're going to sing our song. Yeah. Abby, do you want to sing our song? Tyson, Carson, you want to come sing our song? A Allison, come sing our song. You don't want to? You were here in the Bay Area. You want to come sing our song? Come sing our song. We like this song, don't we?
Sing. I want to bless them. Lydia standing behind them. It wasn't long ago, and it was Lydia and Macy and Grace and Henry, and somebody was standing behind them just a short time ago. And we blink, and now, now it's you guys. You guys will be in the, the help to these younger people. And, I, and boy, what a blessing. Amen? amen? You glad to be in the house of the Lord? Say amen. amen. Oh, my goodness. That's, I don't know about that. If we can get started on that or not. Has the Lord been good to you this week? Amen. Uh, it's getting, we're, we're about to get there. Amen. I, I appreciate the Lord. Appreciate all He's done. Um, won't hold you long this morning. You got your books. Turn with us to the book of Acts in the 12th chapter. And I'm going to read one verse, uh, give you my thought. Uh, this, this thought come to me very, very early in the morning. And uh, by, no, by, by all means, God knew exactly, exactly who was going to be here. We, don't I have a children's church? Nobody wants to go back to the children's church. I want to give you another opportunity. There we got some, Miss Amy. They didn't. They didn't know that we was going to children's church. We'll. We'll. Uh, all want to go to children's church. We need to put. We need to keep them busy. We need. To go, we got to keep these teachers busy. Oh, there we go. Good deal. Acts chapter number twelve. Going to read to you one verse this morning. As the Lord laid this uh, upon my heart, I, I pray and. And, uh, and, and just ask him just to, to, to send it out to the ones that need it. I know that I certainly needed it this morning. All right. Acts chapter number 12, verse number 5. It said, Peter, 
therefore was kept in prison. But, I like that. Anytime you see that, there's more to follow. There's more to come. He was in prison, but prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. Thank you. You may be seated. So many times we get asked, remember me in prayer. Or will you remember this situation in prayer? So many times if we're walking with the Lord the way that, that we should be walking with the Lord and He speaks to our hearts to pray for someone, at that very moment, it should be that when we stop what we're doing for just a second, it don't take no two-hour prayer. It don't take no big fancy worded prayer. When the Lord lays somebody upon your heart, there's reason and there's substance that follow that. You may not even have seen this person or you may not even have, have maybe not even actually know this person that, that the Lord, maybe, you've, maybe they've been just come to visit the church a time or two. And for whatever reason, the Lord has spoken to your heart to pray. At that moment, it's first of all, what a privilege it is for the God of all creation uh, to speak to our hearts to say, Hey, remember your brother or remember your sister. I was thinking about this this week and, and just the people that all through the week has, has come across my heart and, and come upon my heart. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to, with a little bit of your help, some of you folks that the Lord placed upon my heart at a certain point and a certain time this week, I, I'm going to need your help here in just a little while. All right, and you don't, you know, I don't want you to speak. I just, here in just a little while, I, I want you, as I, as I call you out, I want you to just come up here and I want you to just stand for just a second. That's all you got to do. Just stand and look pretty. Amen? That's not asking too much now, is it? And then I'm going to need an old devil. I, I'll pick an old devil out here in just a little while. Amen? But, but we never know what it is that our prayer is doing. Sometimes it, 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 it may be that, that we, never see, we never see the benefit of that simple prayer. Now, let's take just for a second and let's, let's look. Now, now, I read to you in verse number 5. It says, Peter therefore was kept in prison, but prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. That was a specific prayer. Amen. When the Lord places somebody upon my, our hearts, amen, you know what? It, it's probably not a specific prayer in which that we pray for that person. But it's a very, very crucial and it's a very important prayer. And here's why. If we look in verse number 1 there, it said that Herod had stretched forth his hands to vex certain of the church. Verse number 2 said, And he killed James, the brother of John, with a sword. And because it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter also. Then were the days of the unleavened bread. And when he had apprehended him, he put him in prison and delivered him uh, to four quadrants of soldiers to keep him intending after Easter to bring him forth to the people. So what has happened here is that he has already crucified one. He's already killed one and it pleased the crowd. So because it, because it pleased the crowd, the Herod took Peter and had planned to do the, the same thing. Now, with, with, I, I, the a number of soldiers in which that that were around Peter at this time is just absolutely mind-boggling. They had him chained. They had him, they, they was a soldier on his right. They was a soldier upon his left. And it was only God and only God himself could have brought him out of that shape. Amen. But I, I believe this tonight I, or today. I believe that, that it, is, it was the prayer of the church, that intervening prayer that made the difference. 
Have you ever thought about when the Lord places somebody upon your mind? Maybe it's by very, very, very quick, and maybe it's just, uh, oh, you need, to, you need to remember your brother. There's been some of you just this week that the Lord has placed upon my mind, mind for just a moment, and there's been so many others without a doubt that, that, that the Lord's probably not revealed it to me that, that I can even remember, amen? But there's, there's every day in which that I pray, and every it's not, it's not a big long prayer so many times but when the Lord puts somebody and puts a face on my heart I try to remember to pray for that person at that moment Ricky come here just for a second Brother Brandon come here just for a second Brother Squish would you come up with us right here for just a second y'all, y'all, just, y'all just line up right here now what is the importance of this prayer uh, Jason you come on too right here Miss Miranda, you come with him right there. You're going to be getting married up here before long. All right, Miss Lydia, if you would come on this way. Come on. We're going, we're going to just, you're, just, you're just going to stand, stand over here for just a second. At that moment, how important is that prayer? Have, have, have you prayed for somebody this week? Who, who just this, now you don't got to raise your hand, you don't got to tell me, give me just a second, okay? You don't got to tell me just right off who it was that the Lord placed upon your heart. Maybe you did or maybe you didn't pray, but hopefully that you did. And now I need old devil. I don't see no devils in here. Hey man, you're not the devil, but I'm going to ask you, Brother Eric, to come right here. Do you realize that just this week that, that for whatever reason... The Lord put you upon my heart. And I said, oh my, Lord, watch over Miss Lydia. I pray for one of my best friends in the world right here, Brother Brandon. Brother Brandon, come upon my heart just this week. Middle of the day, I thought about Brother Brandon. You know what I said? Lord, help him. Strengthen him. Brother Ricky, good friend, watch Ricky grow, watch him grow spiritually. Amen, we've been together for a long time. And you know what, Brother Ricky, come across my mind this week. Let me just show you the importance of that prayer. Brother Squish, we've been best friends. We, we went through 13 years of school together. And no, there wasn't one college year. Amen. <laughs> They red-shirted me. They red-shirted him first grade, wasn't it? They red-shirted him. He failed first grade, and I got to poking and laughing and making fun. So I got second grade, and then he caught up to me. Hey, man, I fell second grade. I couldn't read a lick. But, Squish, the Lord put you on my heart this week. Ain't that something? This couple right here going to be embarking. They're, 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 they're looking this coming week to be mad. The Lord's put you on my heart this week, and I pray for you. I, now, that's not a feather. That's not a feather in my hat. But I'm telling you that when the Lord places somebody in your path and places somebody upon your heart to pray for them, it's at that moment, it, it's that crucial because the old devil has a plan for that person. See, about the time that the old devil comes and he's got them in their sights. He's got you in his sights and he's fixing the, like I preached last week, to, to try to come in and to try to devour you. Maybe, you've been, maybe you're weak and maybe, maybe it's this whatever's taking place and maybe, maybe there's a car coming around the next curve on the wrong side of the road. Amen? And the Lord has put you, Miss Lydia, put you on my heart at that moment so Lord be with Lydia brother Brandon be with brother Brandon oh my goodness be, be with brother Ricky up there at that prison and you know what the, all that whole time the devil had had them in their sights the devil had a plan for them and at that moment here comes the devil he's fixing to devour them but in that moment that the Lord places somebody upon your heart and you lift their name before the God. Hey man, guess what? There's something that comes on scene yeah. yep. and says, not today, devil. Oh, yeah. hey Amen. That's that intervening prayer. Sure. Hey Amen. That's that truthful prayer. Right. That's why it's so very important that we be in a shape that we can pray one for another. Thank you. You may be seated. 
crucial. Those, those simple prayers are so very crucial. The devil's got a plan for the church just as the Lord does. Amen. Amen. Just as these children, let me get a few of these children up here real quick. Hurry, hurry, hurry. This food's a starving me to death. Get the kids up here. Hey man, just as God has a plan and he has a calling for each and every one of these children, for you young people that's reaching, you're, you've reached the age of accountability, you're, 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 you're at the, their teenage years, maybe late teenage years, uh, uh, the, 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 the pretty hair club back there at the back. Hey man, you know what? In the next few years, you're going to be making decisions that affect you the rest of of your life so that prayer is very important for the church the Bible says this the church was praying without ceasing amen that's our job is it not we better be praying we better be praying without ceasing and because of that God intervened God sent his angel amen now look here we best be praying for these babies right here. Amen. Amen. Pray, pray without ceasing. Amen. Amen. Our schools, Brother Wayne back there, and all of our schools, we better be praying without ceasing. Just as God has a plan for each and every one of these young people that I've called up here, I know there's some in the back, he has a special plan for you. Isn't that wonderful? Big eyes, he has a wonderful plan for you. Charity, he's got a plan for you. What's your name again? Bella. Bella, God has a special plan for you. And it's our job to remember them in prayer. To pray for them, well, thank you, you may be seated. To pray for them without ceasing. Because just as God has a plan for them, so does the old devil. Right. Right. Amen? And it may be at that moment that one of them may be at their weakest. It may be when they're, when they're, when they're at that point in their life. Maybe dark, maybe a dark time, maybe a valley, maybe whenever. And that they're right there in that spot in which that the devil is getting ready to roar. Anybody know when a lion roars? Anybody know? Yeah. They don't just do it for nothing. Right. Hey Amen. Second, third, fourth part of the message that I didn't get to last week. Priest, I was about to die anyway. Hey Amen. But you know what? The, the, the lion don't roar till he's fixing to pounce. Right. A lot of times he roars as he's pouncing. Hey Amen. Sure. That intervening prayer. The importance of that intervening prayer. That, that, that importance of the church's prayer. The importance of each and every one of your individual prayer. Preacher, been on your mind this week? Very well may have been. Very well, very well may have been that the old devil had him right in his sights. But thanks be to do to your prayer. I'm able to stand here and preach today. What about the preacher's wife? What about the preacher's daughters? What about, amen. At that moment, Miss Amy, the devil very well may have had you right in his crosshairs this, this week. But because of the prayers of your brothers and sisters that sat here near you, God intervened. Isn't that something? I tell, I'll tell you one thing, and, and, and I believe this, I believe the power of God is just as real today as what it was when, when God sent the angel and brought Peter up out of that place, out, out of that prison. I think about this. It took him and he, and he walked about the streets. Look with me in verse number 11. I'll be done right here in just a second. And it said here, he set him upon his way. And it said here, and when Peter was come to himself, um, he said, now I know of a surety that the Lord hath sent his angel and hath delivered me out of the hand of Herod. Yeah. <laughs> you, do you remember the psalm? Let me flip back here just for a second. 
Do you remember the psalm, Psalm 34, it said this, This poor man cried and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all of his troubles. The angel of the Lord encampeth round and about them that fear and, guess what, delivereth them. Amen. Amen. I'm glad to know that. Amen. I'm glad that, that, that prayer, that moment, yes. when the Lord lays something on your heart, yeah. it's that crucial. That in that split second that you pray. Like I said, it may not be some. God's not interested. By the way, God's not interested in a big fancy drum. I've heard people pray before, and I think, my goodness, I wish I could pray like that. But you know what? The truth of it is, God's not interested in, and, and it's good. That's, that's a gift, amen. If you can pray that way and, and it's just beautiful and it touches people and all that, praise the Lord for that. That's a gift that God has given you. Use it, amen. amen. I think, well, I wish I could pray like But you know what? He's not interested in big fancy words. If he was, I wouldn't be standing. I'm from Greasy Creek, for goodness sake. Amen. He's not, he's not, I, I don't have any big degrees. He's, and all those are good. I, 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 I'd like to have some, amen. Well, maybe one of these days, I doubt it, but maybe one of these days, I'd have to have several tutors, amen. But, but with all that being said, God is interested in that prayer that comes from your heart. Amen. From the youngest to the oldest. Oh my, I never will forget, I, I uh, got hurt. I was in a motorcycle wreck. And many of you know my testimony. Some of you may not. The Lord was fixing to call me into the ministry. And uh, first I'd ask the Lord to do more. And, and make a long story short. I don't know. Some of you may want to hear it that's here. Amen. I, I, I said, Lord, I want to do more for you. I feel like that there's more that I need to be doing. And, uh he said, okay, preach your word. Preach the word. And I said, oh, wait a minute, I can't do that. So therefore, he had to take me through some lessons, me and my beautiful wife. So I was riding a motorcycle on top of a mountain, ended up with a stick run five and a half inches in my gut, hit muscle, and it stopped. Actually, the exact words was of the doctor, I tell it that it hit muscle. The doctor said it just hit fatty tissue. How does a stick go five and a half inches in your gut and just hit fatty tissue? Hand to God. Six weeks later, I'm laid up. I come through all that. Six, six, six weeks later, I'm healing up. I'm down in my spirit. I'm broken. But thanks be to God for the prayers of the church one fella come by every single morning I'd hear him I, I wasn't even able to get up off the off the bed they put the put a bed in the living room Tony would go to work and after she'd go to work I'd hear somebody knock on the door or he'd just slip on in how you doing this morning little buddy oh I'm aggravated I don't understand none of this God's going to get the glory. He told my wife, he said, God's going to get the glory out of all this. You know what he done? He was praying every single day. Amen. Hey, my wife even, I'm going to share this. Can I share this with you? I'm going to tell it anyway. My wife said, he can have the glory as long as he fits the bill for it. You know what? We're still giving him glory today, and he fit the bill for it, did he not? He'd come in there and try to try to pick me up. Try to lift me up in prayer. Tim, I'm gonna have prayer with you. I said, I invaded it in more prayer. Here I am. Hurt, gonna lose everything. Can't work. Can't work. I can't go, can't whatever this. I can't do this, can't do that. We're gonna pray. And the whole time God was molding me for the ministry in which that he was fixing to put before me. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I 
I'm telling you that that intervening prayer, it means something this morning. Hey man, there's angels encamping around and about us to watch over and to take care of us. Can I physically see them? No, but I believe this with all my heart. I believe that an angel was up there on top of that mountain that day. And, and not just the angel, but the Spirit of God moved on that place and, and sat right down amongst me. Uh-huh. All because of prayer. Yeah. Peter was in the same shape. Fixing to be killed. Fixing to be beheaded. And because of that prayer, that intervening prayer, God intervened. Praise his name this morning. The devil may have you convinced that that's nonsense, but I'm a testament today that it's not nonsense. The devil may have you convinced today that that's the old way of worship. But that's the only way that the Holy Spirit will work, amen, is through the prayers and through His people. So I say that is nonsense. The Holy Spirit is willing and the Holy Spirit is able. We serve a God that is big enough to whatever need, whatever it is that you've, you're, 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 you've got in your family. Maybe it's a drug addiction within your family. Maybe it's alcoholism. Maybe it's, a, maybe it's some of the sites on the, 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 the internet and wish that you shouldn't be going. Maybe it's all that. But you know what? There's prayer in prayer this morning. And if we'll get down and pray to God with that, that concerning prayer, amen. And then God will intervene. Why? Because he loves us this morning. So I say this. I need you to believe in that. You say I'm just not where I need to be spiritually. I believe there's power enough in prayer for people. I believe there's power enough. God's able to save you soul from hell. Amen. He'd be... If there's, power enough for that, if there's power enough for him to be able to do that, there'd be power enough for him to be able to bring you back wherever you need to be. Yes, but he very well may be not just waiting on your, your brothers and sisters' prayer, but he very well may be waiting on your prayer. Amen. Very well may be waiting on your prayer for him to intervene, for him to come on scene, for him to come on sight. I got so tickled. I was filling out the emergency contact at the prison. I said it to be funny. And when I first went to work up there, I said it to be funny. And I didn't realize the instructor didn't think it was so funny. He said, uh, put your emergency contact down there. And so I said, well, that's easy. 911. And that's actually what I wrote on there. <laughs> Don't call Tony, call 911, amen. I said, oh, you mean if I'm dead, you can call Tony? Yeah, you can call Tony then, Uh amen. But you know what? There's emergency contact this morning in which that you can reach. That that, that is life-changing, amen. That is intervening. You'd be willing to intervene this morning if you'd be willing to call. I love you. So let's all stand to our feet. Dear Heavenly Father, we bow before you. Lord God, we thank you for your word. Father, we thank you, Lord God, for the, through the power of the Holy Spirit, Lord God. Father, and I pray and ask, Lord, this morning, Lord, that you'll move out this, uh, throughout this crowd of people, Lord God, that's here. Father, I, that, no doubt, Lord, that there's probably needs, Lord God, that needs to be met. No doubt, Lord God, there's probably things that's in folks' hearts.